<laughs> so this right. is this is our this is our this this has turned out great. Because what this boils down to, right? This is kind of when we got talking about the um, what the movie did differently from the book. The main thing that we realised that it was doing differently that the show somehow had enough sense to understand was this narrative structure. Narrative structure is a lens that changes how the audience feels relative to character activation, uh, character activation, character action, character motivation, and character world view, right? These three things can remain the same, but how the audience learns that information and when, influenced by tone, which we put over here because tone is kind of vague. Um, not vague, it's kind of ephemeral. Yeah. Uh, that combined with narrative structure influences how we feel about the characters, the world, the worldview, the theme, everything else, right? That if because, you... Ch- mm, oh, just, just to say that what is the same from... In the way that the book is... A, uh, the film is a very... The Snyder film is a very faithful adaptation of the book is that the character actions and the character motivations and the character worldviews are all very, very true to the book what the main thing that they've changed is the lens that you're talking about, the narrative structure in terms of what we as the audience learn when and the tone of how we learn it and how those things are presented. So I think a lot of people feel that it's a very faithful adaptation because the stuff that's inside the box is the same and all they've changed is the narrative structure and the tone, but that very much changes how we oh, feel. Oh, massive. As well. Yeah. yeah, the tone is massive and mm. how it's depicted, like, you know, you can have two different mm. people present mm. the exact same amount of information. Mm. One of them is wildly sarcastic and one of them is completely serious. Mm. And that is going to change everything about it. And that is what I think the main issue with the movie is, is that tone and how in that impacts weird, the story. In a weird Water kind of way. Well how we feel, it's not, it's not entirely the same thing, but how we feel is almost the theme of the movie as well or of the the piece of art that we're watching. I think what is interesting is the other thing that changes how, why some people, uh, without making it sound too analytical, but what makes some people okay with the film and some people like me, less okay with it, is the world, our personal worldview, influence how we feel. Fascists love the movie. It's not that the fascists love the movie, right? But if you're sympathetic to Warshaw... fascists love Fight Club, though, and you can also argue that, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's a... You, you can yes. definitely love the movie and not be that, but it exactly what Stu is saying. Like, a lot of you bringing your worldview and projecting that on top of it. However, objectively, you can also argue that there are certain things that pander to X because of tone. The yeah. difference well, between Fight Club and Watchmen the movie is that uh, Fight Club the movie is a satire and the audience don't get it's a satire watchman the film is not a satire but the book is like zack snyder Mm. does not get that it's a satire he he is the he is the audience that's taken fight club seriously it's like someone who read the book (laughs) and then didn't realize it was a satire and this happens it happens it happens and that's okay like i'm as someone who and i'm developing a satire now but i've i've worked i've written satires before like satires are difficult because Good satires to me run really close to the line and, and they are both the thing that they're mm. satire, like Starship Troopers is one, I think one of the greatest mm. satires of all time because it is both the thing it's criticizing, it's good at the thing it's criticizing and it also criticizes it. Like it's yeah. a piece of propaganda that is self-referential, but you can watch it purely as a piece of rah, rah, rah propaganda, right? Yeah. And like the, the, the sex scene in Starship Troopers is to me like, this does not need to be here. This is straight out of, out of a B-grade exploitation movie. And then I'm like, oh yeah, oh. it is a B-grade exploitation movie that is satirizing B-grade exploitation movies. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else mm-hmm. <laughs> on this diagram that we kind of need to run through? Oh yeah. Okay. The, the big thing at the top here, right, is this idea of given circumstances, which is where I want to start. And if we end up just talking about this for 30 minutes, then maybe, and people get something out of it, then fine. Um, we can yes. always do Watchmen Part 2. All right. Uh, given circumstances, um, 
drives character action, character motivation and character worldview, right? But there are given circumstances that are connected to both the worldview of the audience. We've kind of talked about this in character motivation, which is ultimately there is understandings of the world that we have that is culturally specific and that will inform how we perceive these. That's, that's why I use the worldview because worldview isn't necessarily like a political worldview. It's just, this is my understanding of how the world works and these are the rules of the culture and all that stuff. I mean, in right. terms of the Watchmen world, the most powerful example you can use is Vietnam, right? The, we as an audience come into all forms of the Watchmen knowing fairly well how Vietnam played out, even as a, just a cultural echo of Vietnam's yeah. importance to Western society, right? And the alternative history of it where Cap Dr. Manhattan, being an American, won Vietnam changes so much and i i really like you you mentioned the western society and i think that particularly as an american i find it really great that what the show does is it acknowledges the impact of vietnam on u.s culture but it also much more than most american even history classes do acknowledges the impact and the difference that it would have made to vietnamese culture mm. um and in general i think uh, a lot of american broadly both pop culture and just general education etc don't acknowledge the massive amount of impact that it had on vietnam but right from the beginning um when it places one of our heroes as vietnamese person mm -hmm. and and then vietnamese later, american Vietnamese American mm -hmm. because Vietnam became a state, but would have been strictly Vietnamese having been mm -hmm. born and raised there had it not become a state with the change. Um, it, it but, acknowledges a, but a black that American would never have been born and raised uh, in Vietnamese. In Vietnamese. In Vietnam. Exactly, which is, it, it's, it's, it's super mm -hmm. fascinating. And then as the, sh the further the show goes, the more it delves into actual Vietnamese culture and mm -hmm. actually acknowledges how much they were in reality and would have been in this alternate reality impacted mm. by America's uh, mm. actions, which, which I think is great. Well, they've, they've taken the reality because that's how it is perceived. The American war of aggression, as they've called it, is, has a huge mm. influence on Vietnam um, now. And if those circumstances change, then you have to just take them as reality, which is how I'm going to transition us to <laughs> given circumstances, right?